Guys, let's practice four more area problems. So what makes example number one different is you have to create the triangle by using linear models. So this is something that we reviewed earlier in the year. So x equals negative four. That's the equation of a vertical line. We did that when we were working with reflections. Same thing, y equals one. That's the equation of a horizontal line. We reviewed those when we were working with reflections. So this is the equation of a straight line in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So the y intercept is three and you can think of the slope as negative one half. So there are two ways that you could think of that. You could think of it as negative one over positive two. I suppose you could all also think of it as positive one over negative two. Both of those ways will be helpful for us. So let's start by plotting this line. The y-intercept is at three, and then I'm gonna use the slope of negative one over positive two to plot more points. So that negative one is the rise, the positive two is the run. So my rise is down one, and my run is right, th is right two negative one over positive two, down one, right two. And I can keep doing that, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two. I could continue doing that, I suppose, as long as I wanted. But you can also start from the y-intercept and use the slope of one over negative two. You could think of that as positive one over negative two. So that would be up one and left two. So up one, left two, up one, left two up one, left two. And that gives us a set of points that represent a linear model. So that's the equation of the line y equals negative one-half x plus three. So let's graph the other two lines then. The vertical line is x equals negative four. So here's where x is equal to negative four. And what you'll see is essentially these linear models are creating a boundary. The horizontal line is at y equals positive one. So here's my horizontal line at y equals one. And you'll see these create a right triangle here. Here are the, here is the right triangle formed in the middle. So to find its area, you can just count its base and its height. So its base is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Its base is eight units and the height is one, two, three, four units. So to find the area of that triangle, the area is just one half times the base of eight times the height of four. One half of eight is four and four times four is 16. So this is 16 square units. It is important, make sure, if you want partial credit, you have to show your work for the area expression. I appreciate that one half times eight times four is relatively simple mathematically, but write it down so I can give you partial credit for your end result. So let's look at another question, example number two, where I wanna plot points instead of using linear models, let's plot points to form this quadrilateral. So three negative two is the first point. And I plotted three negative one, there's three negative two. So the next point is zero six. So here is the point at zero six. Down here, this is the point at three negative two. Again, ignore that guy right there. I plotted the wrong, wrong point. So then three eight, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's three, eight. And the last point is at six, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this creates a four-sided figure known as a kite. It actually looks like a kite that you would fly. So this is a figure that we use in Geometry 1, or we study in Geometry 1, so these two sides are the same length, and so are these two sides.
So what I want you to realize here is sometimes the easiest way to find an area is to break the figure into pieces that you already know how to find the area of. So in example one, we found the area of a triangle. Well guys, I can break this kite up into two triangles. So there's one of the diagonals of the kite. So if I draw the other diagonal of the kite, an important property from kites that we prove in geometry one is that the diagonals meet at a right angle. So in fact, I can see one, two, three, four triangles. If you, you could find the area of the four smaller triangles and add them up, I'm gonna be a little bit more clever than that. I'm going to find the area of this triangle on the left and I'm just going to double it because these triangles are congruent and that's how I can find my area. So I'm going to find literally my area is two times the area of our triangle. So this triangle's area is one half times this base. So notice that diagonal is the length of the base and its length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is 10 units long. So, and the height of my triangle is 1, 2, 3 units. So, I can find the area of that that way. So, notice the 2 and the 1 half, they cancel and you just end up with an area of 30 square units. But there's a shortcut here, which is going to work not just for example two, but it's gonna end up working on example three and example four also. And you can see how it works just by taking our work and rearranging it. So I'm gonna take the same expression for the area, two triangles. So two times one half times 10 times three. And the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna change the order of the multiplication. So I'm gonna put the one half in front then I'm gonna multiply by the 10, and then I'm gonna multiply by the two times the three. But what I want you to see here in this figure, the 10 is the length of this long diagonal. So that is the length of one of the diagonals. I'll call it diagonal one. So notice two times three, that's six. But notice, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the length of the second diagonal. I'll call that diagonal two. So another way to find the area of a kite is to do one half times diagonal one's length times diagonal two's length. So sometimes we write it this way, one half times D1 times D2. This is a formula that works in order to find the area of a kite. So I could have also just done 1 half times 10 times 6. That's another way to get my 30 square units. You can always break the figure up into triangles and find the areas of, th of the triangles and add them together. But I found over time that some people like this shortcut, so I thought I'd show it to you. So turn your hand out over. This is not a kite, so this is a rhombus. So remember, in a rhombus, all of the sides are congruent. But there's another important rhombus property. I've already drawn in the two diagonals. The diagonals meet at a right angle. They are perpendicular, and they also bisect each other. Again, these are some of our quadrilateral properties. So I know that these two pieces are both three inches and three inches. I know these two pieces are also the same, but I hope you recognize here the three, four, five Pythagorean triple. So I know this is also four inches and so is this. So there are a variety of ways to find the area of this rhombus. So one of the ways is to notice that there are actually four triangles in this figure that are congruent. So I could just find the area of one of these triangles and multiply by four. And the truth is that will always work. So I can think of my area as four triangles or four times the area of this triangle, its base is four, its height is three. So I can do one half times four times three. And I'll be done. So four times one half is two, two times four is eight, eight times three is 24. 
And this time I had units. This is 24 square inches. But what I want you to see, the same shortcut using the diagonals also works for the area of a rhombus. And I want to show you that by taking this work and rearranging it. So over here, I'm going to write the area equals 4 times 1 half times 4 times 3. So what I want to do is rearrange this so that you can see that the same relationship for kites also works here. So I'm going to rethink that 4. I'm going to think of that 4 in front as a 2 times a 2. And then the area of my triangle is still 1 half times 4 times 3. So I'm going to take the 1 half, since all of these components are multiplied together, I can multiply in any order that I like. So I'm going to put the 1 half in front. So I'll kind of cross them out as I use them. I'm going to put the 1 half in front. Next, I'm going to multiply by a 2. And I'm going to multiply that 2 by this 4. And then next, I'm going to take this 2 times this 3. But by rearranging the formula, I want, to, I want you to see what I've constructed. So there's the 1 half again. But look at what 2 times 4 is. 2 times 4 is 8. That's the length of this diagonal. And look at what 2 times 3 is. 2 times 3 is 6. That's the length of the other diagonal. So this is half of 48. That would be 24. So what that gives me, once again, is 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. That's the same formula that we could use to find the area of a kite. We can use that same formula to find the area of a rhombus. So we've seen a new area formula for kites and rhombi. We've seen a Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 reappear. So the last thing that I want to do is show you how we can use special right triangles also. So here's my last rhombus example down here. So I'm telling you it's a rhombus. So because all of four of these triangles, they're congruent right triangles. So I know I've got four right angles there. I know these components are the same, and I know these components are the same. So I know this is a five, and so is this. But the key to this question, if this is a 30 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle, this angle here has to be 60 degrees. There's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I know the little leg is 5, the short leg across from the 30 degree angle is 5. So if I double it, I can get the hypotenuse of 10 centimeters. What's interesting, though, is to find the area, I didn't really need it. What I need to do is take that short leg and multiply it by radical 3, 5 radical 3, to get the length of the long leg across from the 60. But if this is 5 radical 3, so is this. So bottom line is, everything's in terms of centimeters. Uh, just to keep things simple, I'm going to use the same formula that I just showed you above. So the area of this rhombus is 1 half times the length of my first diagonal. That's 5 plus 5. That makes 10. Times the other area of the other diagonal. That's 5 radical 3 plus another 5 radical 3. That's a total of 10 radical 3. And now I can simply simplify. So half of 10 is 5. 5 times 10 is 50. 50 radical 3 centimeters squared. So your assignment for tomorrow is a handout where there are a few questions where you will do some plotting. Then the handout mixes together triangles, parallelograms, rectangles, trapezoids, kites, and rhombi. So the most important thing that you can do is to make sure that you're labeling your picture and showing your work so that if something goes wrong, we can see within your work how you got to your answer. We can see which part of it is the problem. So give that a try. We'll go over that tomorrow, and then we'll take a quick quiz over area. And you don't have to memorize the formulas. I'll give you the formulas.